Now it's possible to 3D print your own sunglasses at home, and I'm gonna show you how. And also in this video, we're gonna do a review of the JG Aurora A3S. I'm gonna do a review of the pros and cons of the JG Aurora. It's called the A3S 3D printer. It has a diamond plate top on it. It has a Bowden style extruder, and it's pretty easy to use. It's sort of a mid-sized desktop 3D printer. It's around the $350 price point, and it does multiple filaments. It does PLA, wood PLA, ABS, and PETG, which I'm gonna show you coming up. And PETG, if you don't know about it, it's sort of an alternative to using ABS. ABS takes a really hot heat bed to hold it nice and warm so it stays stuck to the bed. So that's gonna be something that's gonna be a challenge to you if you're new to 3D printing. Now, this is also one of my first 3D printers, and I'm relatively new to 3D printing, so I'm gonna show you some of the pros and cons, the pitfalls that you might have when you first get your first 3D printer. So this will be a great video for you to watch so you can see what my process was to get some of these cool 3D prints out. Now I'm also gonna show you some of my top five favorite prints right now for 3D printers in general. A lot of times when I'm printing, I like to print things that are useful around the house or something that I can use, something that's practical and that's not just gonna take up space that I can use in my everyday life. And I think that's probably one of the coolest things about 3D printers is it really is your own mini factory right here on your desktop. And I did two different designs of 3D printed sunglasses for you guys to show you today. One design was a little bit better and easier to put together. And I'm gonna show you an example of two different materials. The wood PLA, which is really cool. It's a combination of wood and plastic together that you can sand. You can sand it down nice and smooth and you can varnish it after you're done. You can also put a clear coat on top of that after you're finished to make it nice and smooth. And PETG, it's just a little bit stronger than PLA. PLA tends to be kind of brittle. And if you're gonna make sunglasses out of PLA, I definitely recommend putting an epoxy resin over top of the finished product. And that'll make them nice and strong for running around town. So let's go ahead and get started with my first project out of five, the Low Poly Fox. This is always the one that I test against the other popular 3D printers on the market. And I have several here from other popular printers. We're gonna put this little Low Poly Fox on the bench and then we're gonna compare it to the other popular printers on the 3D market. So let's go ahead and get started with that first print, the 3D printed Low Poly Fox. Okay, let's go ahead and get started with our first print. This is the low poly fox I always print. And it's looking pretty good so far. It's so easy to remove it off this diamond plate stuff. You don't even really have to use a scraper. And it actually didn't even come with a scraper. So uh, you can just use your hand and pop it right off. Now looking at the top right there, I noticed some banding up at the top. And this is where a lot of 3D printers, the lower end ones have some issues. Right there, that flat spot on the top of this low poly fox now let's go ahead and compare it um, and in comparison to some of the other ones out there on the market it does it looks pretty good in the light right here and this bronze filament is pretty neat because it does have a nice luster to it but look at this flat spot on the side right here this is one spot that a lot of mid-range to low-range printers have issues with now once you get it dialed in, you're probably are not gonna have these banding issues. Uh, so you, you notice right there, it's a nice profile on this model. Pretty decent print for my first one. Now the next one up is the Jaguar. This is the JG Aurora A5 printer. And A5, if you don't know about it, is the big brother to the smaller one that I have here today. Now this one did a pretty nice job and I just got this printer in the other day and I'm actually pretty impressed with it. But then again, it is a $500 printer. So very nice print from the A5. And uh, let's move on up to the Creality series. This is the CR8, also a desktop printer and one of my favorites mainly because it's very portable. It's smaller than the CR10, but it does a really nice fine job. You can see there, look at how tightly packed the filament is when it made its rounds and coming up and around. And it might be the profile and the printer that's already set up inside Simplify 3D. If you're new to 3D printing, try to use Simplify 3D. It's gonna make your life a lot easier. Now here's the CR10 print, and there's a little bit of uh, artifacts on the back of the Low Poly Fox on this print. And that, again, that might've been my settings, but the CR10 is pretty much a crowd favorite out there in the 3D printing community. And there's my A3S, my A5, and my CR10 right there next to each other. Now let's see, let's get another one in there, the CR8. And let's look at the next one, which is going to be the ANET version of the, I believe it was the A3 I had for you guys. And this one is a decently cheap printer. Um, but this one's not gonna be the highest quality. It's gonna get you off the ground for 3D printing. 
kind of on a budget. But you can see there, there's a lot more banding in this particular model than some of the other ones that I have right here. Uh, but this one is under the $200 price point. Um, you can see it's the bands aren't quite tightly packed in this model in comparison to some of the other ones. You can really see the fine hairs. It doesn't have as nice of a surface as some of the other low poly foxes in the background. So um, A net e A3, A3 is okay. Pr probably not the best printer on the market. So uh, I would say so far that it's kind of, it's holding true to its value somewhere in the mid range uh, of desktop 3D printer, mid range price of desktop 3D printers. So um, starting out with the Creality series, probably the best out there, the A5 and then the A3S. And then last, probably the, the uh, ANET printers, not quite as good as, as Creality and JG Aurora would be. Now what's also really nice about this printer is the fact that it does come with a USB drive for all of your G-code files. Uh, just go ahead, once you have your file saved from Simplify 3D, put it inside of the printer just like this, and it pretty much instantly loads. I'm gonna press print here, and now I can scroll through using these arrows, find the file that I want that I just worked on, and I'm gonna print this one push confirm to start the process. It's heating up the nozzle and the bed. And also to load the filament inside the printer, it's pretty easy. All you have to do is go to set here and click on change. And you're gonna load the filament in the very back, in or out. So taking it in and out, you have to use this process. It takes a little bit of getting used to, but it's easy to do it. And probably my favorite feature of this printer is the diamond plate. They call this the diamond glass plate. It has some type of texture over top of the glass, which basically lets the print sit down and just pop off by hand. Now, you have to be really careful because it can score the plate if you don't have your bed exactly level. Um, and I found this machine a little bit difficult to level. I don't really like the, uh, the knobs underneath the bed, so I'm getting used to that. But once I had it dialed in, it's pretty much plug and play. Now I was telling you guys before about this printer. This is a Bowden style extruder and the tube goes along the top, comes through here to the hot end. Now you're not gonna really use this for a TPU because it's gonna bind up inside the tube. Uh, so you're gonna stick to PLA and stuff. Uh, but assembly of this was really, really easy. Pretty much put this top plate and this bottom part right here together, four screws, and you're pretty much ready to print. Now for my next print, I'm Irish, so I decided to print some type of uh, Celtic knot, and I wanted to play around with the wood TPU. For my first print, I wanted to do something small. This only took about 30 minutes to print, and I also used some epoxy to go over top of it, kind of give it a nice, a little more strength and rigidity, and it, so it doesn't break and crumble, uh, because TPU is quite soft and easy to break. So if you wanna add some nice strength to your PLA prints, um, this is the easiest way to do it. Zap, z -poxy, or any five minute epoxy will really do. Just do a clear coat over top. And uh, for your other prints as well, if you want to paint it first and then put some type of cover over top of it and it'll make it nice and glossy and it kind of fills in some of the gaps on the top of it. So uh, right here, I wasn't super impressed with the very top of that. It had some gaps and uh, I just wanted to fill that in before uh, my daughter started to play around with it, but it looks pretty good on the bench. And then for my next print also was a nice useful print. I'm gonna put this one in my shop and you know, St. Patrick's Day is coming up. So um, this is another Celtic themed print and this is gonna be a Celtic cross. And I'm also using that sort of bronze style PLA. Now I'm expecting this to turn out really, really cool. I did like the way that this looked when it was printing and uh, it held to the bed quite well. So let's go ahead and pop that off and I peeled off that base layer. I did print a base layer underneath it and the detail that it did in here actually looks pretty smooth. It looks pretty nice side to side. And I love the way this uh, sort of bronze PLA shines. Look at that shine there. This is pretty cool. I don't even really have to paint this. Um, I could just leave it like this and hang it on the wall. And here on the back, you can see where I peeled off that sort of uh, bed. And sometimes you'll get a piece that just won't come off. You could take a pair of pliers and peel the rest of that off, but I'm pretty happy with the way this came out. And um, this one's definitely gonna be hanging up in my shop. So pretty sweet project for the uh, Celtic cross. 
Okay, so now we're gonna get a little more ambitious. We're gonna 3D print a Batman and I'm gonna paint this one and I'm also going to do it in different pieces because there's no way this printer can get all the pieces uh, on this bed. It's uh, not the biggest bed in the world. It is 205, I believe, by 205 by 205. It's said in the specs. So one piece at a time here and uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and get started now. I'm gonna start with the body because I really wanna see what this body prints out like. Like, and you know this this printer from the default settings that I loaded in there from their instructions there is quite a bit of stringing and I was told that you can turn this back a lot by turning down the extrusion multiplier inside simplify 3d now here he is all ready to go and uh, now I can print start printing on the next part but there's going to be quite a bit of cleanup to do on uh, Batman's body there, so you can see. And now I've got his head sitting there being printed, almost done. You can see the supports and the sort of raft underneath it. And that's just going to pop right off. And he's looking pretty good there, starting to actually look like the Dark Knight. Now I have his cape, and this is an extraordinary print for this printer, I feel like. Probably my biggest print yet. This is a lot of PLA. Now you can cut back on the amount of PLA that you use. If you go inside Simplify 3D and you cut the infill back to something like 10% on something like this, or you want to do uh, maybe 20%, that'll save you a lot of money in the long run. It'll save you a lot of filament. So here is his base, and that one's almost done now. And uh, let's go ahead and see what they all look like on the bench here. This is the finished product he's gonna be standing on with the supports and the raft. And over to the left is Batman's body and his head in the very middle. I also just went ahead and printed in black because most of that's going to be black for the exception of the face. And I'm going to use some Posca paint markers to uh, get to fine details on this model. So here we go with the Rust-Oleum. And this is cool because it's sort of gray metallic and this was perfect for his suit i felt like just put a little coat on the bottom base and for that bottom base i'm also going to use the krylon sort of stone fleck stuff you can get this at any hardware store that should go over it quite nicely now here's the finished product with the way it looks and uh, i used that on the body there you can see that metallic finish my posca marker so the yellow that you see on his body and the black for his boots but Man, I'm really liking the way this looks so far. This looks so cool because I was a huge fan of Batman growing up. I used to read all the comics and uh, still do sometimes. I like the classics a lot. But this is going to be a really cool shelf piece. Probably one of the nicest hand-painted 3D printed objects I've done so far in my experience with 3D printing. Now the next piece just pops on right there. And I'll try to put the file link down below because I know a lot of you guys would like to print this. This just looks awesome. Now I've got his head there and I'm going to use some CA glue. You can find that on Amazon and uh, you can easily use CA to glue your pieces together. It sticks to PLA quite nice. And right here I'm just going to detail this a little more for his chin. Sort of that flesh tone where his face is sticking out his mask. And I just took my time here and tried to get these lines right underneath. And there's actually lines on the model, so you can kind of go by those lines on the model. But I think that looks pretty good there. So here's the finished piece. And wow, the Dark Knight is now a part of my collection. And I'm super excited about this. It makes me want to do more characters. Uh, I'm a huge fan of fan art. Um, anybody that went to Comic-Con would really appreciate something like this. The, the detail that this printer actually did is, is pretty decent. So if you're into miniatures and you like to paint things, this is the first one I've ever done. And uh, I'm pretty excited to show this one off on Facebook to my friends who are also comic fanatics. And uh, for his cape also, I did sort of a two-tone on his cape. I did this metallic silver on the back and then I sort of graduated it with a little bit of this same stuff I used on his suit uh, up in the front to sort of give us kind of a shadow from the, fr from the front of the cape to the back. You can see how it kind of sort of is a gradation right there. And that was kind of fun. I was just experimenting and playing around, but I had a lot of fun with this one. Okay, now we're moving on to the theme of this video, and I'm really excited to show you guys the 3D printed sunglasses, mainly because I grew up in surf shops, and um, as a kid, I wanted to buy a pair of Oakleys, and they were 
a couple hundred dollars. Uh, very expensive, and they still are extremely expensive. That's a sort of a mid-range pair of sunglasses these days, but I printed them face down just like you see here, and really the way you want to print them is like this. You want to flip them around a 180 and print them face up because that last layer on the top is going to be the smoothest, and that's going to be the part that everyone sees. So um, you don't want the rough side on the outside of your glasses here. So um, I'm going to remove these and I'm going to add some curve to them. Just going to put them on a curved sheet of paper here and hit them with the heat gun. And PLA is quite malleable. They really do bend a lot. And you kind of have to be careful trying to remove them too quickly because you'll bend them. So here I'm trying to remove the supports and just get all the stuff out of where the lenses are going to go. And you can hit them with some sandpaper. Take your time with these. Uh, have a lot of fun. It kind of reminds me of woodworking a little bit, mainly because there's a lot of steps and process in this. And it's quite actually enjoyable to make different variations of them. And you're going to have to be careful um, cleaning them up too, because PLA is quite fragile. To strengthen them up, you can add some five minute epoxy on there. And this is what I'm doing right there. I'm just adding a little bit of clear coat. You could come back later. Um, you're going to do this before you add the five minute epoxy. You're going to add a little bit of any type of varnish that you'd like, because this is wood and it will hold a stain quite well. It really does look like wood. Um, if you back off of it just a little bit, they look authentically just like wood, which is really neat. So play around with the stains. You can also print different side pieces if you want to. And these just snap together, no hardware required on this design. So this is a rough rendition of my sunglasses. They're not perfect by any means. They could use a little more sanding around the edges, but uh, as a version 1.0, I'm actually kind of impressed because I think I can get a really nice set of sunglasses out of this. So I'm gonna be searching all of my cheapies in my house to uh, find a set of lenses that will fit this frame. So I think I went through like three or four different pairs, but choose any type of men wax you'd like and uh, have fun with this. This is what it's all about. Now here I also experimented with PETG and that's a stronger filament than PLA. It's a sort of an alternative to ABS. And you can see there's a little bit of warping on that left side frame right there where I hit it with the heat gun. So be careful when you heat these up. They are super easy to bend up, but not bad for my first pairs. Now you also might find it enjoyable to make kids toys if you have kids. And I have a lot of fun doing that myself. So this is my rabbit with the jet pack. You can see some banding up there on the very top of the print. It's not perfect, but it's, it's kind of fun to clear coat these with some five minute epoxy. It gives it a nice little shine and also fills in some of those gaps that are kind of annoying at the top. So um, this one came out okay. And I also tried to do a nice fine print for you guys so you get to see some of the what it can do at 0.1 millimeter. It's not supposed to be able to handle anything under two, but I went ahead and pushed this printer to try to do something delicate. And uh, you can see it's gonna need some cleanup here, but you can also varnish this because this is also printed from that wood PLA. And next I decided to get a shadow box for my kid's room and uh, 3D print one of those low poly unicorns. There's a lot of really cool um, shadow box type art you can print out. And if you get a frame that matches up your house, you can, you can do some pretty neat stuff. So just gonna add a little bit of hot glue on the back of this and uh, try to get it close to the center as I can possibly get it. And I'm gonna use some push pins underneath the unicorn to sort of give it some support when it's hanging on the wall. And this will look pretty nice in my kid's room. I got the back on the box and uh, that's pretty much it right there. This print took uh, probably about maybe half an hour to print, not a very long print. And this is actually gonna be pretty cool. So uh, I'm pretty happy with the way that the unicorn came out and ready to hang this one up. So this was a lot of fun, this process with the uh, A3S. Uh, I think it's a decent mid-range printer and stupid easy to print together. There's four bolts that hold the top and the bottom together. And you can be printing with this uh, within a matter of an hour, um, putting it together and getting your first print going. So this is what I did with mine. I had a lot of fun with it. I felt like experimenting with the wood PLA was a lot of fun and uh, sanding stuff and painting things. If you enjoy the process of making things, all of these materials here, you can make some pretty cool miniatures, uh, some smaller stuff, kids toys, and my 3D printed sunglasses were just awesome. And get yourself some Z epoxy. This stuff is awesome for doing any type of clear coat on your 3D 
prints. Um, you can have a lot of fun with this and enjoy the process. I had a ton of fun. I'll see you on the next one.